Freak Out Calamity TV show is a twin stick shooter that appears to fuse the classic top down arena enemy wave shooters of the past such as Robotron or Super Smash TV with a die instant retry philosophy found in games such as Bit Trip Runner or Super Meat Boy. Does it all come together nicely? Well I'm going for switch up, thank you to the developers for the review code and now let's find out. Set in a dystopian future where mutants and killing machines run amok, you are the star of a reality TV show, taking on the mutants for the enjoyment of millions fronted by a shady global corporation. The story is a tale as old as time when it comes to sci-fi, and whilst it does try to deviate a little and subvert expectations, plus the writing is fairly humorous, it's all just a means really to get you killing stuff. The arenas start out fairly basic, effectively just be in large rooms with occasional stage hazards such as pits and a number of doors which will let the waves of enemies in for you to kill. Combos are available for consecutive kills and dying to an enemy will see you prompted to restart and you will begin again shortly after needing to start that particular wave of enemies from the beginning. The time you have taken so far will not reset and how long you take to clear a stage will directly affect the score you get and therefore the grade you are given when you complete the stage. Death is only one hit away, so there is no room for error. The stages do become more elaborate as you move on, becoming a series of connected rooms with turrets, needing you to grab a key to unlock the next part, including breakable walls and windows, or having you needing to survive a succession of enemies arriving by elevator. Things are split into chapters, of which there are five in total, and each chapter, bar the first, consists of four stages. The first chapter has just three, making 19 stages in total. The final stage for each chapter is a boss fight and these are quite well constructed with some being multi-phase battles. In these cases there are huge arrays of bullets to dodge and patterns to learn. Early stages have just a couple of enemy types with more being introduced the further you go into it. There are 13 different enemy types in total ranging from standard melee units to those with guns and even some that will explode after a certain amount of time. Early waves are quite easy to deal with but things become pretty hectic as the game goes on. You start the game with a standard shooter and more weapons will be unlocked the further you get although you must pick your weapon at the start of each stage and cannot then change it without restarting that particular section. Personally I would have much preferred for weapon power ups to randomly spawn during the levels. In my opinion this approach just keeps things a little more interesting or at least have the capacity to switch between a couple of weapons that you've collected so far just in case the one you choose is not up to the job for that particular stage. I suppose you could argue that choosing your loadout before a match adds a little more playability attempting to master stages with each weapon type but for me it dampened the experience slightly. As well as weapons you will also be unlocking skills and power ups through natural progression and again must choose which of these to activate for each stage. Power up tokens will drop out of vending machines strewn across the level every so often and collecting them will grant you one of whichever of your power ups you selected at the start. You can store up to a certain amount and use them by pressing ZR. The power ups in all honesty are a little underwhelming both in terms of their output but also in terms of the animation they don't really look or feel very powerful. On completion of a stage you will be graded based on your performance. All of your other stats are listed such as the number of times you died and your accuracy with your weapon and these are displayed on the level select screen too for you to try and improve later. There are three levels of difficulty to attempt as well. Checkpoints between waves within a stage can be a little inconsistent at times with you sometimes having a fairly straightforward wave and others seeing you need to survive an insane amount of enemies. It doesn't necessarily happen in a natural progression of difficulty either, with it spiking at times instead. You will die a lot playing this game, and the fast nature of the restart makes this much more bearable, albeit it still has the potential to be pretty frustrating at times. With that said, I did enjoy the frantic nature of the action, with it being very accessible as a pick up and play type of game. Plus it also offers two player couch co-op, which is always a plus. When it comes to controls, to be fair, these are a strong point of the game. You move with the left stick and aim and shoot with the right, and the accuracy of the right stick is very good. You feel like you have control over all angles, and this makes taking out the waves much easier. Gameplay is certainly fun, with a few design choices that hold it back from being even better, in my opinion, and it scores 13 out of 20. 
controls are very responsive with the twin stick setup working very well and they get 16 out of 20. When it comes to the visuals, in all honesty, things are just a bit bland. Most arenas look similar and I do find it frustrating how often futuristic dystopia seems to translate to grey in various media. All of the environments look suitably grimy if this is the aesthetic they were going for, but it doesn't make for an interesting setting in my opinion at least. The deadly TV show idea isn't implemented particularly well. Any dealings with the host are dealt with via blurry profile pictures and text accompanied by a gibberish language. It doesn't really give you a sense of the evil corporation being the epitome of greed, personified perfectly by its host. There are even advert segments trying to push the company's latest harmful product, but without any sort of animation, it just becomes another text box. It's a cheap game and we'll touch on this later, but more could have been done to create a living, breathing world. The graphics are shown via a top-down bird's eye view with 3D models for the environment, although some of the details look more hand-drawn at times. The character models have a plasticine look to them, especially when they are killed where their bodies seem to ragdoll as they hit the floor. Things are serviceable enough, there just isn't enough variety amongst backdrops or even enemies. There are a few different locations, but it's all just very grey and red. Each new enemy is introduced by a brief card, listing their vital details and showing an image of them. These are actually quite humorous, with the villains looking like people in rubber suits, and they have a blurry, almost grindhouse look to them. In-game, enemies look fairly distinguishable from each other, although a lot of them have the same red hue. Bullets are shown as a very deliberate black object with a strong white or yellow outline. At times, enemy bullets were very hard to determine against your own, and a few early deaths were due to this. It can also be difficult to tell things such as pits from pillars due to the top-down view, again leading to deaths early on, but they are the sort of mistakes that you only make once or twice whilst you work out what's what. The biggest issue though is performance. There are noticeable frame rate drops at times, not too bad in the first chapter or two, but by chapter 3 they are pretty frequent, with the game stuttering as it deals with explosions or enemies entering the screen. I never got killed because of it or anything like that, but it does become very noticeable as you go further into the game. This occurred in both docked and handheld mode. Music describes itself as headbanging, which is certainly apt, and to be fair it fits the action well and there are a few different tracks. It repeats as the stage plays out, but doesn't ever become grating. Visuals rarely excite, which is disappointing, with stages somehow managing to look similar despite changes to location, plus the stuttering really is pretty bad at times. It scores 10 out of 20. Audio serves its purpose well, going for an adrenaline pumping approach and winning, and scores 14 out of 20. Freakout Calamity TV costs £8, €9.99 or $9.99, and credit where it's due, this price is extremely fitting when weighing up the fun available, but also the flaws present. With five chapters, the mileage will vary wildly depending on your skill set. One stage could take one person 10 minutes, but take someone else closer to an hour. With three difficulty levels and the potential to attempt to better your score, plus of course local couch co-op, there's definitely value here. I would probably say it's still a couple of pound overpriced, just based on a few too many rough edges, but it's a pretty fair deal and value scores 15 out of 20. To conclude, Freak Out Calamity TV Show is a fun but flawed experience. Technically, the performance isn't great, but it can still be fun if you can look past this and it is priced pretty fairly as well. For a few pound more, you can pick up something like Tesla vs Lovecraft, which in my opinion is a superior experience, but at the same time, you could do worse than this one, as long as you can forgive its shortcomings. Freak Out Calamity TV Show gets a switch up score of 68%. So there we have it, a fun game with a decent price point, just let down by some technical issues and a lack of variety between stages. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that review, please do remember to leave a like if you did. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe and until next time, happy gaming.